All right, joining me now to discuss BTC price and other Bitcoin news is our week written review panel, uh, Coindesk Managing Editor of Markets, Brad Cowan in Austin joins me. Christy Harkin is off. Hello there, Brad. Hey, Christine, how are you? Good to see you. All right, we got a bit of a, an awakening in Bitcoin. It was struggling to break 50. It wasn't clear if it would, but th- there it is. It seems to be on a bit of a on a bit of a tear for the day. It's no Santa Claus rally yet, but uh, what do you make of this new support resistance level? Well, you know, clearly for uh, you know for the past month or so, and and definitely over the past two weeks, that fifty thousand dollar level has proved a, a pretty key psychological level. Um, it's kind of like, you, you know, we're, we're above 50 or we're below 50. <laughs> and for the past couple of weeks, we've been below 50. And that is, you know, kind of been a little bit of a disappointment to a lot of Bitcoin traders. You know, we've talked over the mm-hmm. shows over the past few weeks about the Santa Claus rally that, you know, didn't happen. Well, didn't this happen. is not really that Santa Claus rally, but... Uh, it's, it's a little, you know, it's like a stocking stuffer, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. it, it, you know, people have been, been wondering kind of where we're going from here. We're we just going to trade sideways for the rest of the year. So, you know, today's action, I mean, it's, it's not a huge move for Bitcoin. We're up about 5%, uh, on the day, uh, but it's not a tiny move either. So this is probably, we'll get some people excited or at least like checking their, uh, checking their their feeds and their um, wallets over the next couple of days. Do you see a correlation with the stock markets? You know, I was just looking at this uh, earlier today. Um, the, you know, Bitcoin has, you know, for the past year probably had a slightly positive correlation with the uh, standard and Poor's 500 of stocks. Uh, and But it kind of comes and goes, and it's usually a pretty weak correlation. Um, but it, it looks like it has strengthened probably over the past uh, couple weeks. Um, again, it's not, a, a, but in general, yes, it looks like, you know, Bitcoin does tend to trade a little bit with stocks. And, you know, it's kind of like Bitcoin also is increasingly trading people say as a as a macro asset so it ha- it trades on some of the same fundamentals that drive the stock market so you know whether bitcoin's following stocks or or bitcoin and stocks are kind of following the same things the economy and inflation and whatever the federal reserve is doing um but yeah stocks have been up the past couple of days and now bitcoin's up too so um travel Let me take a look they're, at that tra- chart, they're traveling you know, i noticed that Bitcoin, you know, hasn't made an advance over 60% a year to date. Uh, ETH has had an incredible run for the year, over 4,000%. And we do see an activity today that DeFi is doing quite well. Uh, What do you make of that? Well, in general, you know, as an investor, it, it depends on your perspective. If you're stuck in traditional markets, uh, you know, you're, you're 25%. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> you know, pretty good year for the S&P 500. And a lot of these big giant pension funds, they try to get 7%. So they're probably doing fine. Um, but then, you know, you're always looking over the fence. And so here, here's Bitcoin at 68%. Um you know, so there's probably some some FOMO there, you know, maybe some greedy people wishing they had those Bitcoin returns. But then again, you know, you're a crypto investor, you're in Bitcoin, and you're looking at these Ether returns this year. Ether's quintupled, you know, and and that's uh, so that's got to and, and, you know, also the Bitcoiners looking for maybe one hundred thousand dollars at the end of this year. Uh, that's been kind of one of the big talking points. And, you know, we got this little mm-hmm. rally today, but it doesn't seem like we're close to going towards one hundred thousand dollars. Could be wrong. No, <laughs> it could Bitcoin, happen next year. But, <laughs> right. Keep those right. laser Who eyes knows? on. We'll see. Hey, Brad. So. We heard from central banks uh, last week. Over the weekend, we heard from China, the public uh, 
the People's Bank of China, they're reducing rates, uh, a rate decrease, whereas, uh, you know, the Bank of England is having a rate increase. The ECB is going to start tapering in March. The Fed is doubling tapering and will end their bond buying program by March. So they're taking different economic approaches to Omicron fears and inflation. How are the markets reacting within that? Well, you know, I mean, the, the central banks, uh, it's interesting because a lot of the, the G7 central banks, they do try to coordinate some on monetary policy. And so generally speaking, all the G, the G, you know, the big uh, G7 central banks are, are tightening at this point. The Fed is tapering uh, with an end to end their asset purchases by March. And also the ECB is tapering. Uh, the BOE, you know, pro- probably out ahead of the curve in terms of going for the surprise rate hike that they had. But, you know, with China and then China's economy, um, you know, it's a little more opaque. Um, their data is a little harder to come by and it's, you know, a little more centrally managed. Uh, but they also, you know, they have very tight controls on their on their uh, currency so, you know, they, they try to keep a very close peg to the dollar. So sometimes, you know, when the central banks move, that affects the currencies. And that is kind of how these central bank decisions in one country get translated to global markets it's via the foreign exchange markets. But with China, you know, they do this and they do that and they do this, but they try to keep an iron grip on that uh, RMB exchange rates. So they may be loosening conditions internally, but the, that looser monetary policy in China may not translate to global markets where, again, like the predominant trend of the G7 central banks is tightening. So uh, mm-hmm. what all that means for right. Bitcoin, you know, generally speaking, probably people more focused on the tightening and the G, you know, mm-hmm. in the Western countries than they are in the, the, Hence, no, the you know, China. Valley. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people are also looking at the China economy with Evergrande and, you know, they're very also I was just reading they're very strict about um, coronavirus uh, cases and they're very aggressive. Yeah. Anyway, that that's about it on that. Let's let's uh, pivot to a subject that is taking crypto Twitter by storm, and that's Jack Dorsey versus Web3. We have Block CEO Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, tweeting out, you know, uh, oh, there it is. I'm officially banned from Web3. So (laughs) he's also tweeted the VCs are the problem, not the people. He's been on a defriending spree. One of the casualties is A16Z co-founder Mark Andreessen, legendary VC who is investing big into Web3. Uh, Then Mark Andreessen I retaliates, blocking Jack on his Twitter, as you could see right there. And so Jack starts trolling Mark uh, Andreessen and A16Z that you see. This mission sta- statement has always felt so dark. Uh, we invest in software eating the world is the, the Twitter bio for A16Z. So uh, it's interesting, this uh, back and forth between Jack and Web3 proponents. What do you make of Jack's assertion that Web3 is controlled by VCs and not sufficiently decentralized? I mean, I think he makes a pretty good point. You know, I mean, if you follow the money with a lot of these projects, it is tr- absolutely true that a lot of the tokens are, uh, you know, on on some of these projects are are definitely held by insiders and early investors, and you know they they have plans for um, eventual distribution of these tokens over time. Like if you go to their websites and you look at, they have these pie charts that show the distribution. Over time, they do plan to get more decentralized, but yeah, it's a it's a fair criticism. Yeah. I, I think, you know, what's what what's going on here, you know, what I just talking with my sources is, you know, there's definitely a sense that the kind of blockchain wars have heated up a little bit this year. You know, uh, Bitcoin has kind of gone its own way, and you know, then there's DeFi, Ethereum, and like layer one competitors, layer two, like competitors for kind of like the application side, and Bitcoin, 
uh, you know, it's a store of value. It's a, it's, it's digital gold and maybe it's a form of payment. Maybe it's a currency, Mm -hmm. but you know, there's really kind of a bifurcation of the industry and Bitcoin obviously is the first, it's the biggest, it's the original. Uh, it was the breakthrough invention. Everybody else is kind of copying that. Um, but there's these camps, these ideological camps, and they're not getting along. Well, I think, <laughs> you know, I and Jack, think clearly yeah. he doesn't want what happened to Web 2 to happen to Web 3 or to happen in this more. De- I, I guess he doesn't care about Web 3, but he wants to see the next phase of the Internet developed in such a way that people have self-sovereignty. A couple of firms do not own all our data and exploit and influence influence our decisions. And so he is sounding the alarm on that and, and, you know, criticizing VCs for the control that and influence that they can have in that technological development. So I see where he's coming. He's winning a lot of fans. He's creating a lot of enemies. He's defriended Brian Armstrong, CEO of Coindesk, or I can't believe I make that mistake. Everyone makes that mistake. I shouldn't. All right. (laughs) Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong, as well as Gemini CEO uh, Tyler Mikolas, but interestingly, not Cameron. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> well, they made the joke. I, I think it was uh, Cameron made the joke that, or it was like Jack said he would he would uh, pass messages through to through Cameron to Tyler, Cameron. and one of them <laughs> responded that they were not they were <laughs> not they were non fungible twins NFTs. <laughs> 